today on Sports Card Investor, five cards that are going up, up, and up some more, plus an investment tip on a card you should consider buying. My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies, and at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me on my journey to profit from the hobby we all love. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to another episode. And we're going to start today's episode off with a little bit of trivia. I'm going to show you a card, and I want you to guess in the comments below what card this is. I'm going to show you a little part of a card, only briefly. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here it is. All right, put in the comments below what card you think that was. Let's see if you let's see if you can figure out what card that was that I just showed you. Let me know in the comments. And this is the type of trivia that I am playing tomorrow night, Wednesday night with my members in my live stream and my members who get the trivia the fastest are going to win spots in this free break of noir basketball. I am opening up this box of Noir basketball along with Prism First Off the Line football, Prism basketball, and other cards with my members. The trivia is awesome. We have hundreds of members who are going to be logged into their devices playing this live trivia game, trying to guess what sports cards I'm showing them. And the members who guess the quickest get their way into that card break. Will you be part of it? I would love you to join my membership program. And if you join by 8 p.m. Wednesday night, you will be entered into this. Again, if you join by 8 p.m. Wednesday night, you will be able to join the trivia fun. It's less than $10 to join. Go to my website, sportscardinvestor.com and click on the membership link. Do it by 8 p.m. Wednesday night. Go to sportscardinvestor.com and click on the membership link. I would love to have you as part of that trivia game. We'll see how good you are. Hopefully you got the answer to that one that I just showed. All right, guys, let's talk about five cards that are trending this week. Now, let me take you back to last week's top five episode because last week, last Tuesday, I told you that Mark McGuire cards were red hot and Sammy Sosa cards were red hot. And I said that they were both red hot because of the fact that there was a documentary that ESPN announced that they were going to do about the uh, home run chase between McGuire and Sosa. And that as soon as that announcement had occurred the week before, both of their card prices started to go up because of course, sports card investors like you and like me saw what happened to all of the classic basketball players during the Bulls Last Dance documentary. So of course we're thinking, well, maybe that's gonna, you know, happen to McGuire and Sosa as well. And so sure enough, their cards have been on fire the last couple of weeks. But during my episode last week, I said, as a savvy sports card investor, you should start thinking about other players other than McGuire or Sosa who might benefit from that documentary as well. Maybe they'll be shown a lot during the documentary. And in fact, one of the guys I said on the show that I said I might think about was Jose Canseco because as of the time I had filmed the show last week, Jose Canseco's cards had not started to move, even though McGuire's cards and Sosa's cards had gone up considerably. Well, guess what? Jose Canseco's cards have now gone up considerably. And the number, number, the first guy I'm going to show you on my list this week is Jose Canseco and specifically his 1986 Donruss card in a PSA 10. In fact, let's take a look. This is Jose Canseco's cards. And as you can see, these cards have remained over the last 90 days. They, they were relatively flat up until the last week. These cards were right around the price range. So kind of just $200 or a little bit under. And that's where they had sat for most of the last 90 days until, (laughs) until, until I did my episode last week, which was right in here when I filmed it. And of course we can see what happened since that point in time. Most recently, this card has sold for $641. So a card that was selling for $200 a few weeks ago, most recently sold for $641 because the auxiliary effect, the effect of, okay, we're going to see McGuire and we're going to see Sosa. So who else might be featured? It's logical to think that McGuire's bash brother 
in Oakland, Jose Canseco, also the guy who, by the way, kind of broke the seal on the whole steroid issue, will probably play a role and potentially a prominent role in this documentary. So uh, it's good to see Jose Canseco's cards going up, and hopefully you were one that was able to get on these cards uh, early before this rise started to happen. Another guy who is a classic baseball player from that same era, an all-time great baseball player who, who maybe some of you out there thought, hmm, well, if people are chasing McGuire and people are chasing Sosa and now people are chasing Canseco, then how about Roger Clemens? Because Roger Clemens was, of course, one of the all-time greats and a huge popular star in the 80s and the 90s and, in a, you know, an amazing dominant pitcher. And Roger Clemens' cards have been going up and up and up. And in fact, what we're looking at here is his 1984 Fleer update, which was his first card. It was his 1984 card. Um, and you can see these cards have been on a positive trend the last few weeks and very nice trend line actually over the last 90 days. Uh, and they may have gotten a little bit of an additional bolster uh, by the documentary news, I don't know. But overall, the trend line has been very, very solid. And this was a card you could have bought back in April. So less than a month ago, you could have bought this card for $760 or right before that, $699. And the most recent sale is $1,200. Um, so this card has close to doubled over the course of the last month. And this is probably, you know, in addition to the Maguire and the Sosa, you know, this is probably part of just that iconic card chase where we're seeing collectors and investors of all types chasing the iconic stars in every single sport, the stars from the 80s, the stars from the 90s. Uh, and of course, Roger Clemens was one of those big stars. And the fact that people are now chasing this particular card as well as his other cards, and we're seeing the prices go up on Roger Clemens cards, uh, not a big surprise seeing what we've seen in the market overall. Speaking of another iconic guy, let's, let's shift over to football for a minute and let's talk about the all-time rushing yards leader in football. In fact, by the way, a record that may never, ever be broken. A record that may never, ever be broken. All-time rushing yards. Because think about it. Think about how offenses are using their running backs today versus how offenses use their running backs 10 or 20 years ago when they had more of the I'll take every single carry workhorse type running backs. And of course, I'm talking about a member of the Gator Nation. Go Gators. I'm talking about my favorite, Emmett Smith. And Emmett Smith, in particular, we're going to look at his 1990 score supplemental card in PSA 10. And this card has been on a significant rise over the last 90 days, a really, really strong trend line. In particular, the last month, this card has been going up and up as people have really been chasing these iconic stars in every single sport. This was a card you could have bought at the beginning of April for $399, and we had a few sales of that or less, and a lot of sales less than that back in March, all the way down to $350. But in the most recent days, you would be paying $1,325 or even $1,450 for this card. That is how much this particular card has gone up over the course of the last couple of months as people are chasing Emmett and people are chasing these iconic stars. Now, I told you I was going to give you an investment tip in this episode. I'm going to show you this investment tip now. This is potentially one of the coolest, if not the coolest thing about my Market Mover software is it enables you to see investment tips like this that you otherwise would never be able to see. And trust me, I, many of my members have made thousands of dollars using my Market Mover, Movers program to show, to see things like what I'm about to show you. So this is Emmett Smith's 1990 score supplemental card in PSA 10. But let me add another card of Emmett Smith to our search. Let me add his 1990 FLIR update card to my search. And let's take a look at the trend line on that card in PSA 10. What do you notice here? You see, this is, this is the cool thing about this software. Look what's happened. One of Emmett Smith's cards has taken off in value and popularity over the course of the last 30 days. His score supplemental football. Look at that top line. But then this is his FLIR update football. 
and it has not yet taken off. The gap between these two cards, which used to be quite small back in March, is now humongous, humongous now that we're in May. What does this mean? This likely means that his 1990 FLIR card is going to start to take off soon. And I say it likely means that because I see this pattern across market movers all the time. When, a, when one card of a star player starts to take off, typically the other cards don't move quite yet. And then the market realizes it. And then the other cards start to take off in the same pattern, but there's a delay. So if you do nothing else but use the market movers product to find those instances where one card has taken off and another card remains flat and you buy that lower card, that's a very profitable investing strategy, or at least it has proven to be historically. And by the way, it's not just with multiple variations of, of a player's card. It also is with different grades. I see this same pattern occur all the time where a PSA 10 starts to take off and the PSA 9 is flat. And then guess what happens? A few weeks later, the PSA 9 takes off. If you're looking at this data daily and you're buying that PSA 9 when the PSA 10 is taking off, trust me, you're going to make your money back on this software times several times over. And if you don't believe me, right now in my members only Discord channel, in my Market Movers Discord channel, there's a conversation going on, uh, or it was a couple days ago, about a very iconic card where the same exact pattern is happening. And the guys in my Discord Market Movers member channel are buying up this iconic card. And I'm telling you, they're going to make thousands of bucks because they're seeing a pattern in the data just like this with a very iconic card. And they're spot on that they're getting ahead of the market on that one. So that's Market Movers. And so my investment tip for you, this Emmett Smith card, the 1990 FLIR update, it could pop. It could pop. Will it? I don't know. I can't guarantee. I can't promise anything. But I just look at the data. That's how I do my analysis. I look at the data and I see trends like that. And I think that that's pretty interesting, a pretty interesting trend to consider. All right, so let's continue with the top five list. Let's talk about two other iconic players who have seen their card prices go up quite a bit recently. And let's next stay with the sport of football, but go to an iconic player who's still playing today. Let's go with Drew Brees. Drew Brees' cards have been on an upwards tear over the last few months. And you can see right here his 2001 tops football in PSA 10. This is his 2001 PSA 10 card. And look at the trend line on this card. This is a card that has been going up and up and up and up ever since the season ended. People, I think, are really appreciating Drew Brees. And, you know, not only, Drew Brees is, is an, not only an awesome player, one of the all-time great players, but also a great humanitarian. And he's been doing a lot of great work during the COVID crisis, uh, donating money and, and, you know, really trying to help New Orleans out. And New Orleans got really hit hard with COVID. Um, and uh, just a great guy. And people are appreciating him and appreciating his legacy and, and buying his cards. And, you know, Drew Brees still has a little window of upside left, a little window of upside. If the Saints can finally get over the hump maybe this year, maybe he can find himself back in one more Super Bowl before his run is over. That would be awesome to see. But look, Drew Brees' cards, which you could have bought back in February for close to $300 or even maybe a little bit under $300 for this 2001 Topps PSA 10. Most recently at $937, $1,275. This, so this card is now reaching that $1,000 mark after being $300 just a couple of months ago. But Drew Brees isn't the only... Iconic star, obviously, we're seeing this across all stars and across all sports, and we are seeing it as well in basketball. And you guys know this. We've been talking a lot about basketball cards. It's great to see Tim Duncan following this pattern because Tim Duncan is a player who has historically been underappreciated by the sports card hobby. He is one of the best players of all time. You can make an argument that he is in the top 10 best players of all time time. But his card prices never reflected that, but they're starting to finally now. And you know, a Tim Duncan's 1997 Topps Chrome PSA 10 that you could have bought back in February for $327 or $315 is now all the way up at over $1,000, over $1,100. His cards have finally 
gone on the run that they so long deserve to go on. And of course, you know, he's been announced that he's going to be in the Hall of Fame class this year. People are excited about that. People are anticipating that. And people are remembering and reflecting on Tim Duncan's career during this time when there are no sports. So we're thinking about the classics and we're thinking about the all-time greats. And Tim Duncan is certainly that. It's great to see his cards go up like that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed these top five cards and I would love to have you tomorrow night in that trivia game, Wednesday night, as I mentioned, win your chance, win win cards out of this noir. We're going to go hunting for Jason Tatum rookies in there. We're going to go hunting for uh, De'Aaron Fox, Donovan Mitchell, and dare I say Lonzo Ball. We're going to go hunting for Lonzo Ball rookies as well. No, knowing knowing me, we'll probably pull seven straight Lonzo Ball cards out of that box, right? Uh, but anyway, I would love to have you as part of it, guys. If you get in the membership program by 8 p.m. Wednesday, you will be uh, you will be playing trivia live with me. You will be playing trivia live with me Wednesday night at 9 p.m. for your chance to win into that Noir break, along with Prism football, Prism prison basketball. I've even got some heritage baseball that I'm throwing into the mix as well. So it's going to be a great time. Hope to see you as part of it. Thanks so much, folks. Give my YouTube a subscribe. Hit the little bell icon if you haven't already to get notified of new episodes because my next new episode will be out in two days and I'm excited about that. See you, see you soon, guys. Have a great rest of your week. Take care.